Rotary Magazine presents The Playmaker, published in the print issue of Rotary Magazine, written by Diana Schoberg. Music by Yusu Kim of Chicago. I'm Linda Yu. It's a frigid January night, the second in a row to dip below zero degrees Fahrenheit in Chicago. Schools are closed, events canceled, flights grounded. Outside, an Arctic blast is howling, but inside Stephanie Yurchik's condo, the party is sizzling. Yurchik wears jeans and a Pittsburgh Steelers t-shirt with a Magic of Rotary pin affixed. Draped over one of her shoulders is a terrible towel, an iconic yellow dish towel-sized piece of fabric that stalwart fans of the American football team wave to rally their team. The occasional cheer, or groan, punctuates the party's chatter. This playoff game between the Steelers and the Buffalo Bills has already been rescheduled once because of the dangerous winter weather sweeping across the United States. A group of Rotarians visiting Rotary headquarters was stuck in suburban Evanston because of a flight delay, and Yurchik, the 2024-25 Rotary International President, invited them to watch the game with her. To call your chick a sports fan might be a Hall of Fame-worthy understatement. At her home in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, about 18 miles outside of Pittsburgh, Yurchik's basement woman cave is floor-to-ceiling Pittsburgh sports. In a nearby closet hang her two favorite uniforms, her rotary t-shirts and her Pittsburgh fan gear. Her enjoyment of sports extends well beyond that of a typical fan. One summer, she assisted with character analyses for Canadian Football League scouts attending NFL training camps to watch for players who might be cut that would be a good fit for that league. She also participated in a women's training camp put on by the Steelers and run by former players. Her experience was cut short after she snapped her Achilles tendon doing footwork drills through car tires. Didn't matter. It was just a fun, fun summer, she says. She met the vice president of the Steelers, Art Rooney Jr., when he spoke to her Rotary Club. Afterward, she brought him some chocolates from Saras Candies, a well-known confectionery founded in Cannonsburg. It's a tradition she's continued to uphold a few times a year, the two united by their love of the game. That kind of connection is what's happening at the party tonight. Yurchik met Renee Laws, 2023-24 2023-24 governor of District 7610, Virginia, when they sat at the same table at a president's-elect training seminar and their mutual love of the Steelers came up. Ever since then, we would see each other at events and we would always have football and rotary to talk about, says Laws. Life couldn't be better unless the Steelers were actually winning, which unfortunately is not the case. Not tonight. The Steelers lose the game 31-17 and that's the end of their season. But for Yurchik, it's just the beginning. Only this year, Yurchik will get her own chance to head up a winning team, Rotary. A few weeks later, Yurchik gathers with family back in western Pennsylvania for the birthday of her eldest cousin, Michael Hatalowicz. The two grew up like siblings, always at each other's houses, and they still tease each other as if brother and sister. The dozen or so gathered, cousins and their spouses, children and grandchildren, sing happy birthday, first in English and then in Slavonic, harmonizing to Nohaiolita, a traditional Carpatho-Rusin birthday song whose title means many years. Yurchik joins in, her voice clear and strong. Music has been a touchstone throughout Yurchik's life. Her dad played the accordion and led a polka band, the Harmoniers, for more than 35 years. I learned to polka before I learned to walk, she says. Yurchik was a singer with her father's band, and when she's in town, she sings with the Eastern Orthodox Church Choir, directed by another of her cousins. You know how some families get together and play cards, she asks. My father was a musician, my grandmother, my aunts, they were all singers. So when we got together, we sang. Yurchik grew up here in western Pennsylvania near the border of West Virginia, a countryside of forests and farms in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Both her maternal and paternal grandparents moved here from Eastern Europe, Poland, Slovakia, and Ukraine, settling down to take advantage of the jobs in the region's coal mines and steel mills. Yurchik's culture and her family remain important to her, 
Spend a bit of time with her, and you're likely to hear stories about her visits to meet distant relatives in Eastern Europe and family lore involving a misunderstanding around beets and the powers of a patron saint. She gathers regularly with Hatalowicz and her other maternal cousins who live nearby, and she gets together with her more far-flung paternal cousins for an annual trip. Western Pennsylvania is part of what was once known as the Steel Belt for its steel mills and coal mines, though it's now called the Rust Belt after the decline of those industries in the 1970s and 80s. The population of Yurchik's childhood hometown, Manesson, peaked at around 20,000 people in the 1930s, but as of 2022, had declined to less than 7,000. Rows of stores along the main street stand vacant, and there's only one full-fledged grocery store left in town. As a child, Yurchik devoured Nancy Drew mystery novels and dreamed of being a spy. I was in this little place in Pennsylvania, and I really had never gone anywhere, she says. I wanted to see the world. When she went to college, she channeled that desire into a major in international relations, with its focuses on history, political science, and languages. She studied Russian, Polish, Serbian, and Italian on top of the French she'd learned in high school. As she was finishing up college, she applied to work for the FBI, the CIA, and other U.S. intelligence agencies. But there was one obstacle. All four of her grandparents were from Eastern Europe. Most people's background checks take about three or four months, she recalls, while mine apparently took a year and a half. By the time the FBI called with a job offer, Yurchik had started down a new career path as an administrator in higher education, and she loved it. She declined what had been her dream job, and she went on to earn a master's degree in education and a doctorate in leadership studies. Her dreams of an international career were backburnered, that is, until Rotary came along. Over dinner at the birthday party, Yurchik's nephew Jeremy Lane reflects on his aunt. Her vibe, her energy, her spark that she gives off is just intoxicating, he says. She's just an amazing woman. I'm so thankful for her to be in my life. She really is very authentic and very genuine, says Rebecca Bazar, Hatalowicz's daughter. She could fit in anywhere, in a room full of diplomats or a room full of local yokels. Everybody loves her, and she's going to have a good time everywhere she goes. The dozen people gather toast Nazdrovie. And then Yurchik begins the long process of hugging everybody goodbye. As they walk outside, she and her cousin Peter Morello, the choir director, say goodbye their way in Polish. Do widzenia. They loosely translate, until we see each other again. The next morning, as she walks into a side room at a diner in Cannonsburg, Yurchik is welcomed by hoots and applause from the couple dozen Rotary members seated along a string of tables. But it isn't just Yurchik who's cheered as she enters the room. It's the greeting that every member gets when they arrive for a meeting of the Rotary Club of McMurray, Yurchik's home club. The tradition started a few years ago when someone arrived late to the meeting. Everybody cheered. And it caught on. Now, no matter when they arrive at the meeting, all members are greeted as if they're the president of an international organization. How could you not feel good, Yurchik says. For years, the club had been stuck at around 35 members, Yurchik says, but it used Rotary's action plan to take a look at itself with new eyes. Club leaders asked every member about the club's performance, things such as the club meeting date, time and location, and club projects. With that information, they determined that meeting at a different time of day might work for more people and switched from a lunch club to breakfast. Instantly, and I mean instantly, We had two new people come into the club, Yurchik says. They said they were invited before, but could never come. The club didn't stop there. Members talked to other groups in the area and found people who wanted to serve, but didn't want to attend club meetings. Looking into options, club leaders started a satellite club for people to do just that. The concept brought 15 new members to the club. They pay full dues, Yurchik says. We don't discount anything, but... We also know they're not coming to weekly meetings. Instead, they hold PBR nights, referring not to the familiar monogram of the American beer, Paps Blue Ribbon, but to pizza, beer, and rotary. 
This morning's meeting is vibrant, full of lively conversations and bursts of laughter. The club is, to borrow Yurchik's catchphrase, simply irresistible. It makes my job easier talking about being a Rotarian in an active club, she says. Being irresistible means the experience is so compelling, so fun, so dynamic that people are drawn to it and don't want to leave, she adds. At the bottom of that is the whole concept of belonging. Is this the kind of group I want to belong to? That was the question Yurchik asked herself in 1991 when an acquaintance walked into her office at the California University of Pennsylvania and asked if she'd like to go to a Rotary Club meeting. Yurchik didn't know much about Rotary, but she was recently divorced and looking for ways to meet new people. And when the woman mentioned Rotary's internationality, something clicked. When she went to her first meeting of the Rotary Club of California in the town south of Pittsburgh, she met Chuck Keller, a member of the club and Rotary International's 1987-88 president. He introduced himself, and we got to be friends quickly, she says. I had a built-in Rotary godfather. It was amazing. Yurchik was drawn especially to the work of the Rotary Foundation, becoming first the foundation chair for her club and then for her district. Later, at the zone level, she served as a regional Rotary Foundation coordinator, focusing on fund development. Her work with the foundation meant more people got to know her and led to a 5 a.m. phone call in 2012. Her name had been put forward to replace Ann Matthews as a Rotary Foundation trustee. Matthews left her post to join the Rotary International Board of Directors. Later, Yurchik became a director herself and led the organization's strategic planning committee a role that proved pivotal to shaping her thinking about how to move Rotary into a thriving future. Given Yurchik's background in international relations, her interest in peace as another of her priorities as president likely comes as no surprise. She encourages living the four-way test, investing in a positive club culture, and engaging with Rotary Peace Centers as some of the ways members can help spread the message of Rotary's commitment to peace. We're not going to get a Nobel Prize for stopping a war, Yurchik says, but we can use what we have in Rotary to make the world a better place. One of the pillars of Yurchik's peace push is, well, a pillar. That afternoon, after the club meeting, she joins members of the Rotary Club of White Oak, another Pittsburgh-area club, at a local park. Dan Darty, the 2024-25 governor of District 7305 and a member of the White Oak Club, is holding a white eight-foot pole. The words, May Peace Prevail on Earth, are inscribed on it in eight languages. English, Irish, Italian, Polish, German, Croatian, Spanish, and Vietnamese, all spoken in the community. The phrase also appears in Braille, and there is a rainbow flag sticker and another decal for Veterans for Peace. Yurchik walks up and immediately pulls out her phone, scanning the QR code on the Peace Poll side that links to a website for more information. She encourages clubs to put up these polls as visible signals of their commitment to peace. Doherty's wife, Autumn, who is also a member of the White Oak Club, has made it her goal to get every club in their district to erect a peace pole in the coming year. When the last White Oak Club member arrives, everyone clusters around Yurchik like players huddled around their coach during a crucial timeout. The peace pole project is a favorite of mine because it's a visual representation, she tells him. It's going to tell everybody in White Oak who comes to this park that your club is about peace building. Rotary is about peace building. To conclude the ceremony, Yurchik invites the members to reach out and touch the pole. They unite, all part of the same team, the Rotary team. Yurchik smiles. Game on. This episode of the Rotary Voices podcast was produced by J.P. Swenson and edited by Wen Huang with production by Yusu Kim. I'm Linda Yu. If you enjoyed the show, please rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. This article by Diana Schoberg originally appeared in the July 2024 issue of Rotary Magazine, the official monthly publication of Rotary International. <laughs>